What's the difference between being funny and writing something that's funny? What's the difference between being funny and writing something that's funny? Uh, well, being funny is uh, you're sitting around a table and you, you make a comment. And in, in the context of what's happening around the table, uh, a bunch of people laugh. But writing funny is about creating a truth for a character who is saying something uh, inexpertly in a way that the character's not realizing he or she's being funny, but the result is, is, a, is a comic moment that the audience can appreciate. Um, and, and again, it comes from sharing your own life um, and then being truthful in, uh, in imaginary circumstances, but being truthful in a way that lets us see the flaws. When, you know, uh, being truthful in imaginary circumstances is something that, that actors have heard uh, from, you know, Stanislavski and Meisner, dramatic actors. But if you think about what drama does, uh, it's like, it's like, you know, when people have past lives, they're never janitors. <laughs> they're always queens sure, or, uh -huh. or, or emperors or they were viziers. They're, they're never the garbage collector. They're, they're, they're never a guy who worked, who worked as, you know, as a, as a chef in a diner <laughs> in, in a past life. And so when, when, when a dramatic actor is being truthful in imaginary circumstances, they're being great, they're being serious, they're, they're, they're accruing all types of positive virtues to themselves. The comic actor tells the truth. The comic actor allows themselves to be less than stupid because, you know, the, the point is, is that we are. We are, if we, you know, if we just tell the truth about ourselves, we're not perfect. We make mistakes, we screw up all the time. There's a, there's a wonderful moment in uh, Judd Apatow's This is 40, where there's a, they're having a party and there are these cupcakes. And the wife just throws the cupcakes away because, you know, we don't need all these cupcakes. And then the next scene, you see Judd Apatow eating the cupcake from the garbage. And I laughed. How can you be funny? How can you write funny? I laughed because, yeah, I've done that. Don't tell my wife. Uh, but you know, not a disgusting garbage with a lot of disgusting things, but you know, just kind of on top. So it was still a, it was sure, still a three second anything. rule. Yeah. But but that's that's how he creates comedy. He just takes from his life, from the, from the lives of, uh, of of people that he knows, people around him, and he tries to tell the truth based on character, based on character. So you're not. Um, you're not trying to come up with the funniest thing you can think of. Uh, you're trying to come up with what would this character say in this moment? There's a, there's a, a great, uh, this is, this is old. This is, if you, if you remember radio, um, there's this great scene from Jack Benny radio series in which uh, a robber comes up to him. And the robber says, your money or your life? And the, the comedy writers who were writing this, the episode were stuck. What could we say? What's his answer? So they're thinking about it. And one of them is on the couch. And the other one's pacing. He says, well, you have anything? He says, I'm thinking. And they went, that's it. And they gave, that's the line that Jack Benny says. So he says, somebody says, your money or your life? And there's this big pause. And Jack Benny, in his inimitable way, goes, I'm thinking, and this is the longest recorded laughter in the history of radio comedy. Uh, because that's what somebody would say when they're stuck and they don't know what to say. There's, um, there's an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond um, in which Robert, the big hulking brother, played by Brad Garrett, brings home what he thinks is the one. Uh, and that's the title of the episode, She's the One. And 
So everybody's talking and, and, and you know, not paying attention. And uh, Raymond's going to bring some desserts out to the table. And he sees the girl who's the one catch a fly, trap the fly, look around, make sure nobody's looking. She doesn't realize Raymond's seeing her. She picks it up. She pops the fly in the mouth. And Raymond is frozen. And he stays frozen. Uh, Ray Romano stays frozen for about four and a half minutes. And there's all action around him. And his parents come in. There's all this stuff. And finally, Robert says, so what do you think? And he just turns to her and says, she's not the one. Which is, how could you write a better line than that? But because you're not trying to be funny, you're trying to think, what would this character say in this moment, uh, given that the character is not the greatest orator in the world, and, and, and given who he is and knowing who he is? So, so the way to write funny is to tell your own truth, to tell the truth about yourself, and to tell the truth about uh, the characters who you know, and tell the truth about what you know and who you know and as truthfully as possible. One, one more example from the early age of television. I'm sorry, I'm old, okay? I'll, I'll talk about TikTok in a second. Um, Norman Lear adapted this British series, uh, uh, Till Death Does Do Part, and he's adapting it for an American audience. And so he's got this character, Archie Bunker. Now, who's Archie Bunker? In the, in the British series, he's this old codger who's kind of bigoted. So how did Norman Lear, Lear write him funny? He just thought of his father. His father used to say, uh, you know, stifle dingbat. He had Archie say that. His father once said to him, you're the laziest white man, and, you know, whatever. He had Archie say that. How did, Ray, how did Phil Rosenthal, who's the showrunner on um, Everybody Loves Raymond, how did he write the mother Marie? Well, that's his mother. So he doesn't have to invent anything. He just has to recollect it. And the first book really tried to talk about what are the discrete tools that aren't taught in universities or conservatories that can help you take a scene that isn't working and make it work. Um, and, and we have a number of tools like uh, uh, positive action and, and metaphorical relationship um, and straight line, wavy line. Uh, those tools in the first book are designed to help a writer or a director say, okay, this scene is kind of flat, the scene isn't working. Um, and what are the techniques that we can use to, to make it better? Or what are the techniques that we can use to analyze why it's not working? So the whole, the whole first book was really designed to talk about what comedy is, how it works, why it works, what's happening when it's not working, and how can you fix it? And then I was, so I was doing these workshops. This is, this is before the pandemic. Uh, do you remember before the pandemic? Uh, you know, there was this pandemic and everybody had to stay home and not go anywhere. Uh, so before the pandemic, uh, I would go out, I would go around the world. Uh, no one was more surprised than me that I was been me being invited around the world. I would go around the world and I would do these workshops. And um, inevitably somebody would say, okay, but in this script, how about this? And I would try to give them an answer. And I was doing script consultations, but it made me think, well, how does, how does what I'm talking about, how does that translate to a whole narrative? And so that's where the second book came out of, um, The Comic Hero's Journey. Uh, my friend Chris Vogler had written the, the Writer's Journey, which is based on the works of Joseph, Joseph Campbell. And so uh, I ripped him off. And I, I, I told him, I'm, I'm ripping off your title. No one can come up with a better title than that. But you thanked him in the forward, right? I did oh, thank good. him in the okay. forward. Uh, so I, <laughs> That's how we do it in Hollywood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I didn't give him any money, but I did thank him in the forward. Uh, so the Comic Hero's journey uh, was really taking a look at, so what's different in a comedy, in a comic narrative, uh, that is, that follows the hero's journey at, at points, 
but then importantly deviates it and how does it de how does it deviate it and where does it deviate it and what are those changes and what are those important points that that might not be covered in in an otherwise you know wonderful book um, by John Truby or Robert McKee or or Chris Vogler uh, when they're specifically talking about comedy.